Well, Chet, hey neighbors, welcome to the Shed Shop and this edition of What's Under the Sheets? Would you like to know what's under the sheets, neighbors? Well, I'm going to tell you in a minute. But first, y'all know I got to tell you a little story. And it has to do with what's under the sheets. So let's go over here to my damn apple tree, neighbors. Okay? Last fall, during the coldest time of the year here in Tennessee, I decided I was going to buy an apple tree 40 miles away, throw it in the back of my pickup truck with no cover, drive it here, and see if it fucking survived. Well, some bitch did, and I planted it right here where this metal stake is. My neighbor Blake, across the street, came over in the spring and bush hogged my pond right there. And he ran over my apple tree. And he broke it at a 90 degree. Just like that, neighbors. Right at the base right here. That's why there's saran wrap on that trunk down there. And wouldn't you know, I saran wrapped it right away, put this metal stake in, watered the shit out of it, and the son bitch was just fine. Housed ever. Do you like our muddy driveway? Here in Tennessee, at least in Marshall County, we have nothing but clay and limestone. And that piece of shit trailer, which is next to that piece of shit truck, I said that backwards, that truck has no traction. And so when it snowed and my uncle was in the hospital, I kept getting stuck in the damn driveway on the gravel. And then trying to turn around right here, I just run into my apple tree and snapped it off right here, neighbors. And five days later, I finally decided to come over here and do the same damage repair that I had done the last time it got broke. So, I just come out here after five days, I waited too long, and I wrapped that bitch right here with saran wrap and I watered the chit out of it. Well, about a week and a half later, I came over here to pull the metal stake out of the ground and to pull my tree out of the ground and throw it in the pond. How's to ever, neighbors? Would you believe this shit? Look at that. Right here, 90 degree break. Right here, 90 degree break. It's alive! That's one hell of a resilient tree. Now, do you know how bad the food is for you at the grocery store? Well, if you don't, you need to do some research on it. In the future, we're going to do some videos explaining to you why everything at the grocery store has almost no nutritional value and kills us. Which is why you should grow your own damn food. So, now, let's get to what's under the sheets, neighbors. This guy, Doug, that I bought my apple tree from last year, I messaged him again this year, and I told him, I need some more trees, neighbors. Would you like to see what the fuck we got? I was going to have Grumpy Unk do the camera, but then I thought you guys would see this the whole time, okay? Because he's got really shaky hands. Doug is a type 2 diabetic. Unk Dooskies is a type 2 diabetic. Doug has no legs because of his diabetes. My sister Adrian just died because of her diabetes. Make sure you go in the comments, you guys, and tell Grumpy Unk, stop eating 600% of the recommended daily value of sugar in three hours of your day, neighbor. So you don't get your goddamn toes cut off. That being said, Unk, let's show them what kind of trees we got. Okay, neighbors, what I've gotten is I've got me another Fiji apple tree because they like to be in pairs, apparently. And I got me. Two separate varieties of plum tree. We got a Massly Plum. And we got a... Where's the other one, neighbors? We got a Santa Rosa Plum. Because Doug says they like to have two separate varieties to pollinate each other. And then I got us some Bella of Georgia White Peach. One tree of that. And then Doug has the best damn prices... His trees, look how big they are. Only $25. Everybody else charging $40 and $60. Look at these big ass blueberry bushes. 20 bucks, neighbors. $20. Doug charges me. 
Doug has some side cutters that he can't get running. And I said, well, hell, Doug, do you remember what I do for a living? I'm a small engine mechanic. Last year, I told him, sorry, neighbor, I'm not interested in working on your four-stroke chip. He had some tillers he needed fixed. I didn't want to do it, but you know what? Doug's got grapes. He's got cherry trees. He's got thornless blackberries. He's got thornless raspberries. He's got all kinds of chip that the chainsaw redeemer wants but can't afford. So, we're going to try and fix his sidewinders and trade him for some trees. The good old barter system. Because when the government collapses and the fucking apocalypse starts, neighbors, if you don't have food in your yard, you're going to fucking starve. No fret. Chainsaw redeemer will share with you. Okay? I'm not greedy. But seriously, we need to grow our own food. Because the shit at the grocery store is killing us. In the next few days, I will plant my trees, neighbors. And when I get them done, I'll show you in one of the shed shop updates. So, that's it. Just wanted to show you my excitement. I'm getting high on fucking fruit trees right now. Three and a half years clean off of heroin and crack cocaine. And I get high by buying fruit trees and getting excited about the fact that I love to go pick me some fruit and some grapes and some lettuce. Which I got growing over there. Okay. Right there. Problem is, I can't afford the material to build the raised beds that I need as a gimp to garden. So I'm trying to make them out of cedar trees. Because I can't afford lumber. And that's a lot of work. It's taking forever. But we're going to grow food, neighbors. And we're going to get healthy. And we're going to get grumpy, Unc, to start eating lettuce and greens and shit. So he doesn't die on me. Take care of yourselves, neighbors. Seriously. Your life matters. No matter who you are, where you are, what you are. If you're a human being... Your life has value, whether you think it does or not, okay? So eat right, think right, sleep right, be right. I love all you neighbors, even though I fucking suck at it. Until next time, be kind to one another. Everyone is facing a battle. Doug's battle is, he just lost his other leg, and he's already been living with one leg for years. So when we think we got it bad, remember, somebody else has got it worse. Hashtag persevere, right neighbors?